Hello, people of the internet. Morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy Wednesday to all. Let us wrap up this Psychers release real quick one time with their second EP, the House of Tricky How to Play EP. Fresh off of watching the title track, Do or Die, and my goodness, was that an experience and a half. That song was tremendous. The energy was immaculate. It got the heart beat pumping, the heart. It got the blood pumping, the heart rate going. There, there's the sentence I was looking for. And um, well, knowing what Psychers and KQ are capable of, um, I reckon the B sides on this album are going to be equally as spectacular. So let's check them out one time. Here we go. For those of you who are new around here, or never been around uh, for one of my album listens before, we do it is if these. Uh, if the album listen survived the YouTube content ID check, the timeline below is going to be chapter based off of whatever song we are listening to. So if you want to skip ahead to a song of your choice, you are more than free to do so. Uh, but in the meantime, we have got track number one on the album to start off with. So here we go. Track number one, Skater. Lyrics by Eden, Olander, Mr. Hongjung, Pepperoni, Olive Maddox, and Dor, along with Minje, Sumin, and Yechan. And then composition and arrangements done by Eden, Olander, Hongjung, Pepperoni, Olive, Maddox, and Door. So, essentially, off the rip, um, this the entire album is has been written and produced by the Eden team of Eden, Olander, Pepperoni, uh, Olive, and then Door and or Maddox involved. Some songs Maddox isn't involved in. Some songs. Actually, no, Maddox, is, Maddox isn't across the board. Door is the one that's kind of a uh, song-by-song song basis. Minjae, Sumin, and Yechan are all on lyrics. Who I'm guessing they're the rap line in the group, hence why they're in all of the um, credits for lyrics. But regardless of the fact, KQ getting members involved with their own lyrics, very exciting times. You'll love to see it. And... You know, seeing the same production team across the board means you're going to have a continuity in the sound. Very cool to have Hong Jung, Monsieur Capitan involved with the songwriting process as well. Very cool. All right, Skater, here we go. I wasn't quite sure what the meter was at the beginning. I like this pace though. I like how it's kind of a lighter anthemic piece. Again, they're really leaning into that auto tune aesthetic. That's very cool. The rapper's cadence here is a triplet over a four beat. I do like that the chorus is, it feels half time, it's a little bit slower, I think it really pushes the anthemic feel of it a little bit better. Also I love that harmony at the very end of the chorus there. Wow. 
this half turn pace almost makes it feel triumphant in a way. And I love that we get a post chorus this time around too. Lead in with that high note. Nice, nice. Oh my goodness, look at the length of the song. It's um, it's over 3 minutes 45. <gasps> In this day and age? Oh, what a treat. What a treat. Okay, Skater. Heck yeah, heck yeah. I, I actually quite like the fact that it's a little bit of a tamer song because I think it sets up nicely for the rest of the album. Like, Do or Die is an extremely intense song. So having a song like Skater to kind of ease your way into this era, I think is a really friendly way to approach it. And the thing is, it's not like a gentle song. It's just slower and it's less in your face than kind of like what the typical, uh, not 80s, Psyker sound is. And I really like that. I do like that it kind of has like that video game vibe of, well, I mean, it was like a Zombieland video game, right? Was the title track. And I do like that there's hints of that video game vibe, especially in that synth part. But overall, my favorite part about the song is the fact that it's not intense. There's still power behind it. It's not intense. It's not the fastest song in the world, especially once that chorus comes around. It's very an anthem -y. It's It does feel like a victory anthem in a way. It's very interesting because coming at the very front of the album, typically a song that kind of sounds triumphant usually would come at the very end. Because, you know, the album tells like a story. To have it at the beginning is an interesting touch, but I do like it. I do like it a lot. Nice. Okay, next up is Homebody, technically the second title track on the album, and I'm gonna guess, give it a few days, we'll probably get an MV for this. Because, well, we got MVs for both title tracks during their debut era as well, so I reckon give it a few days and we'll probably watch Psychers again. So this will not be the last time we listen to Homebody, but Homebody! Um, li quite literally the exact same team as Skater. Cool. All right, here we go. Yeah, we don't waste no time. We can make it shine. Don't you feel this vibe? We're a different kind. We're a different kind. <laughs> ready to fully lean into the K-Hip-Hop vibe, but I know this is a pop song just based off of that synth in the background. The Psychers, they're not afraid to throw in a whole lot of rap throughout their songs. Okay. This is kind of what I expected this chorus to be. Okay. 
Again, they're not afraid to throw in a lot of rap. Because once the release comes around, this is the proper pop song release now. That two part harmony there. actually a three-part harmony at the end of that chorus there. Oh, and really bring it back down for the chorus. Er, chorus, bridge, sorry. One, okay. Oh, what an interesting song. <gasps> And you know, if we're kind of talking about double title tracks in a way, like comparing Homebody and Do or Die very much gives me similar vibes to comparing Sun Ugong and FML by Seventeen from their latest album. You know, one's got this kind of slower, more like impactful anthem vibe in FML and Homebody. And the other side of the title track is the high intensity, high energy song in Sun Ugong or Super and Do or Die. I'm getting the exact same vibes off of listening to, the, uh, listening to this album so far, and I quite like it. I'm surprised at how kind of slow the opening two songs on the album are. Because I'm trying to think back to their debut project. And I guess they, they started with an intro song, didn't they? Yeah, tricky secret. And I guess we got a full length. We got two full length songs before "Do or Die," which kind of, I guess, explains why it feels like it's a bit of a longer lead up because it is technically a longer lead up. Also, point of note: over three and a half minutes. Another stamp of approval from me, but I do quite like it. I love that, even though it does feel more anthemy. It's a little bit slower than kind of what I associate with Psyker's music. For me, Psyker's has always been that really kind of aggressive, high-intensity kind of music. So it's nice that we're opening with a bit of a gentler side to them, show off, show off that they can do a, a little bit of a softer beat. And I may just be forgetting a song similar to this off of their debut album. You know, if you, you listen to a whole lot of music and kind of forget about stuff you've listened to a few months ago so if i go back to the debut ep and find something similar to this that may be the case but in terms of like off of recent memory the way it starts off it's it feels again quite impactful especially in the way that the vocals kind of flourish once you get to that chorus it's not just like Okay, here's the chorus. The chorus properly has like a nice build and a rise to it. You got a nice growing harmony. And even though the song's slower and it's got that anthemic feel to it, the rap parts, the numerous, countless rap parts throughout this song, feel like they belong here. And I think on a slower, like the slower the song is, I think the harder it is to incorporate a rap verse, and they've done a really good job with it. And in fact, I like the amount of rapping we get because it kind of differentiates it from other anthemic boy group music that may drop around this time. So, heck yes, I like how this album starts.
Okay. Um, Kung uh, came out with a performance video. I think this dropped like last week or something. Uh, didn't watch it because I knew this out. We were going to be doing a novel listen. So we saved it for today. Here's the performance video for it. We got visuals for it. So this is track number four titled Kung. Um, let's see. Credits once again the exact same as Skater and a Homeboy across the board. So we've got we've got door involved. Yeah, the order seems the same as well. Tidy. Here we go. I am now better prepared for the KQ intro card. And bump up the volume back up. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we found this direction. Okay. Again, with the hefty amount of auto tune. Oh, nice. I like that ABD Habidi motif. Ooh, aggressive pan on the vocal. They're really embracing that K-Hip-Hop vibe. I'm down for it. That is certainly the type of song that will get a crowd absolutely amped up during a live performance. That amount of energy going straight from the speakers into your ears. That is a song you will feel in your bones if you hear this live. Nice. And with the amount of rapping talent this group has, and I'm pretty sure, like, this is from someone who doesn't really know, like, member lineups and things like that for this group yet i'm pretty sure there's at least three rapping rapping uh, like artists in here at, and i say at least because i'm pretty sure we had like five or six different main rappers in this song but 
As for like the overall group composition and like the group lineup, I'm pretty sure there's three in the rap line, right? In the main rap line, at least. And I'm guessing they're the three that's been on, you know, lyrics every single time. But my goodness, this is an intense song. But again, this is also taking a page out of the K-hip-hop book. And admittedly, yes, I don't know a lot about this genre. In fact, I don't actually know a whole lot, if any, about this genre. And like K-hip-hop is very much a realm that I'm slowly starting to wean myself into. So I don't really understand like the technical elements of it. I just kind of talk about it from like a compositional point of view, see what I can make out and things like that. But yeah, you feel it. You feel it. it. It's almost war marchy in a way, which is interesting. But I love the contrast that they have here, especially, I'm going to go back because it's like a performance video and it should be a little bit easier to find, but this part, or actually, I want the hibbity habbity part again. I love that. I, I think that cadence switch up where it goes really quick with the bibidi babidi ho yeah da 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 bibidi habidi ho. I think that's so cool. Just the way that they add a sudden little injection of a little triple eight meter to just kind of spice up the cadence a little bit and then you know take it down. Yeah. The way it goes, yeah. The way it goes into the growl tones, I think that's so cool. That's a that's a goosebump inducing moment right there. We'll go again. If it'll go. Ramp it up the second time. And then hit the beat. The way the song builds, it's exactly what you want from it. It's entirely predictable. You can follow it really easily. And the way the energy builds, the energy releases. The listener is entirely ready for it. At least they're ready for when they're going to happen. The strength of when it happens, that's a different story. Because I think this song packs a punch and a half. Especially once you get the full beat dropping. Mm. Nice, very tasty. All right, back into the uh, song songs. Uh, no more videos, unfortunately, but keep her moving. This is track number five, titled Run. Uh, once again, the same composition team, and the order of door and Maddox have been reversed, which is interesting. I wonder if there's, I wonder if there's a meaning to that. Anyways, essentially it's the same composition team as every single song we've checked out on the album so far in this little album listen. So here we go. Also, four minutes. Oh. We offset with a little bit of vocals. Why is this a really nice pre chorus, though? Got kind of tropical housey since. Oh, 
went straight into the rap verse. No real buffer moment. I like that transition though. Very quick. Love that we have three rappers. Or at least this. I'm pretty sure it's three. But we get a long second verse because of it. Vocally is a really impressive performance so far. Lots of vocal layers. Nice. It's, ooh. I don't know what it is, if it's like a today thing, but I feel like we're getting quite a bit of tropical house type music today. And I mean, considering this will be, what, video number six I'm recording today, it kind of makes sense why I'm just getting more opportunities to come across tropical house music, but I like it. Again, it's not an extremely intense song, but for me, Run, I think, has the, like, vocally the most impressive performance that Psykers have put out so far. The harmonies in this are extensive, and there's a lot of it. And they're also really good harmonies. And I love the way it's mixed, too, where the background vocals almost feels like they've been treated as, like, a synthesizer instead of, like, a vo vocal part. So they're, they're not given, like, the pure crystal clear clarity of the main vocal part. But they're given the kind of flourish and the ambiance of a synthesizer to kind of enhance that vocal top line, and I really like it. But yeah, nice and chill. Nice and chill. It's quite loud, but nice and chill. Actually, the loud might be because I have the volume in my ears cranked up of way high ways, but... And this is the kind of song I could see, imagine myself listening to on like a car ride or like a bus ride train ride home from work you know it's it's kind of relaxing it's got a little bit of energy to it but it's just kind of uh you know uh, watch the scenery go by type of music and i really like that it's again not an extremely complicated song to listen to in fact this entire era has been pretty straightforward in terms of music like i feel like with the debut album there was quite a little bit of thing a uh, little bits and pieces that they've thrown in but with this album across the board it's been pretty straightforward which makes like following along to it really easy and really simple at least for me i don't know how it will be for you all but i just love the fact that the songs are a nice hefty length because well let's see we're coming up to the final song now okay so run is the longest song on the album at four minutes four but this entire album, apart from the final song, Sunny Side, is over three and a half minutes. Every single song. That's really impressive. I wish more people would do this, man. I, I hate what streaming services have done to the music industry. Because they prioritize replayability. 
So we're getting songs that are, you know, title tracks, two and a half minutes. It makes me sad. As someone who grew up listening to, to rock music, you know, like the 1980s, that would average, you know, five and a half, six minutes for a song. It makes me sad seeing songs that are two and a half minutes that are considered titles. But besides the point, one final song to go. This is Sunny Side. Um, lyric, lyrical team, everyone besides Door. So Door wasn't involved in Do or Die and Sunny Side. Every single other song he was involved in. And then same in composition and arrangements. The exact same team as before, just minus Door. Sick. Here we go. Again, kind of a chill vibe. It almost feels late night vibey a little bit. so hard, I completely missed the transition to the rap verse. The lyrics are kind of ironic. Sun is coming up, even though for me it feels like a nighttime song. <laughs> Three part vocal stack. Oh man, that song grooved so hard. Again, it's... I wonder if that is kind of the thing about this album, is that they're not just showing that, you know, they can do that high-intensity sound, but they can kind of ease off the gas a little bit, kind of, kind of chillax with it a little. Because the way the album ended was Run and Sunnyside, very vibey. And it just got progressively later into the day for me. And as someone who's been really enjoying the late night vibe of music, and especially when it comes to B-sides, I really like Sunny Side. Wow. I'm, I'm genuinely very impressed with what they've done here. We'll talk about Sunny Side first, and then we'll talk about the album in a minute, but... Sunny Side. Again, when it comes to a slower, vibey song like this... Getting auto-tuned to not feel out of place is tricky. 
it can get very tricky to incorporate auto-tune in a slower song like this. And while this isn't the slowest song in the world, like, it's not a ballad. Not by any means in the imagination. But it's essentially acting as the ballad of the album. So, typically a pop album, you end with a ballad because it kind of winds down the project all nice and neatly, right? Brings the energy of the listener down, brings the energy of the album down, and then nice graceful ending with a ballad, boom, the album is over. While how the How to Play EP doesn't have like an out now ballad, Sunnyside has that kind of chilled out vibe that you would find in a ballad. It's just packaged a little bit differently. And because of it, you typically wouldn't get heavy auto tune in it. And if that's a stylistic choice that psychers are gonna go with, well, auto tune is one of those things you can't really shy away from. Like if it, it if you're gonna use it, you you're gonna be like exposed. You're going to be noticed and so what psychers have done with essentially this entire album is but especially in sunnyside they didn't shy away from the auto-tune at all when they used it they made sure people knew they used it and because of it there's a certain charm to it which yeah big fly in my house but which and typically, it's something that you wouldn't really see in a slower song like this, but works. And I think that's kind of a Psyker's trademark at this point, at least in this album, is that they've managed to incorporate auto-tune in songs that maybe typically you wouldn't find auto-tune in and still make it work. So, thumbs up. As someone who doesn't really like auto-tune, thumbs up from me. That is quite a big fly that's flying around in my house. But I'll get him later. Um, this overall album is really good. It genuinely is one of those albums that kind of caught me off guard. Because, of course, I mean, I think I explained it earlier. But kind of my immediate thoughts when it came to Psychers was they were going to bring the energy and they were going to bring it straight to your face. And after listening to Do or Die, I figured, okay, we're going to get something close to the same again. Do or Die was a really good song. I really enjoyed it. But the rest of the album, I think minus Kung, in a way, like Skater, Skater was pretty up there. But like Skater, Homeboy, Run, and Sunnyside, in comparison to Kung and Do or Die, were not as intense as I expected them to be. And that kind of expectation I had that was shattered or kind of pushed away or redefined they've redefined what my personal thoughts are in terms of like what I think about when I immediately think of Psyker's music because for me based off of like this album alone man they've got the they are bringing the vocals they're bringing the rapping they're bringing the auto-tune and they're bringing the vibes but they can bring the energy and control themselves bringing the energy. And that's the big one. They can hold back on the energy when they need to. And they can really give it the beans when they need to. They, and they don't shy away from doing either. If they need to take a step back, they're going to take a step back. If they want to give it maybe an extra, like, extra 50 horsepower, they're going to do it. And if they do something like stylistically in a song, they're going to commit 125% to it. The auto-tune, oh, they're going to embrace it. The screaming high tones, they're going to embrace it. The aggressive rapping, they're going to embrace it. Chill vibe, they're going to embrace it. High-intensity punk rock, they're going to embrace it. And that kind of determination and just, like, lead-footedness on just giving it everything to every single piece of their music is going to take them a very far away, I think. Because you feel that confidence that they have when you listen to their music sometimes when you get like a group that's known for their high intensity stuff and they do a ballad you can kind of feel the little like insecurity and like uncertainty they have towards it because it's you know out of their comfort zone with psychers i don't sense a comfort zone everything is their comfort zone and everything is outside of it at the same time because whatever they go for they're gonna give it everything and I'm, I'm so impressed. I'm genuinely so impressed. Well done, Jeff. Well done. But 
that is it for me today thank you all for bearing with me and my incessant rambling through the album thank you for listening along with me hopefully you enjoyed it as much as i did one last request from me today let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world whether it be checking in with your friends and family holding the door open for somebody even picking up a piece of trash off the street just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day today Ooh, excuse me and no matter where you are in the world should you ever be going through a tough time in your life for whatever reason it may be even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.